So I have assigned you readings in an anthology that's produced by a man named Joel Kupperman. And Kupperman, in trying to give us an understanding of modern perspectives on human nature, assigns to us Thomas Hobbes, Joseph Butler, David Hume, and Immanuel Kant. I think the first thing that I want to do in giving an assessment of why Kupperman assigns the thinkers that he does is make a very important suggestion to you. For Kupperman, understanding the direction that modern political philosophy and modern philosophy takes on theories of human nature boils down to this dichotomy. Are we, in our nature, individualistic, as Hobbes suggests, or are we some combination of a being that tends towards self-love and individualism, but is capable of social love, socialization, a broadening out of our perspective. Now, when Kupperman takes a look at Hobbes, he really does something interesting here. He, he asks the question, is Thomas Hobbes correct in pointing us back to an original state of nature that is nasty, brutish, and short? Is his philosophy a correct or accurate philosophy? Where I would depart with Kupperman on this account is on the question of whether or not Hobbes is trying to get to the truth of the matter or he's trying to project a truth upon us. If he's able to suggest to us that the core of our being is our desire for self-preservation, he's then going to be able to suggest, suggest to us a vision of society, a vision of civil government. Uh, this movement away from Christianity, this movement away from ancient philosophy, and the movement towards the embrace of the modern state and the peace that the modern state promises to all human beings if we follow its edicts. So here we have to understand Hobbes not so much as a loner as Kupperman presents him, but as someone who wrote the Leviathan right after this deadly and horrible 30 years war fought in Europe in the first half of the 17th century. Hobbes had seen a lot of death. And he'd recognize that if you build a society upon religion and you build a society upon your basis of how you ought to worship God, you open that society up to religious warfare. So why don't you build instead of on a high and mighty ground, build on a solid and stable ground, that stable ground of human self-preservation. So I think that's an important distinction between how I would present Hobbes and how Hobbes is presented in part by Kupperman in this text. Kupperman's inclusion of Joseph Butler and David Hume, I think, is helpful. Why? Well, he shows that you have two different thinkers here. Uh, you have uh, Butler, the theologian, uh, the pastor, and you have Hume, uh, anything but uh, a religious type, but both agree that we can make our way as moderns toward a moral conception of the world. Not moral in the sense that we are pious, not moral in the sense that we are holy or we live according to God's law, but moral in the sense that we feel when we are doing right and we feel when we are doing wrong. Here, note what Butler has told us. We have this conscience that tells us when we're doing something wrong. We have this sense of shame that tells us when we're doing something wrong. Butler says God gave us that. God placed that within our soul, and that's why we act the way that we do, and that allows us to be moral. Well, Hume says, God or no God, we do get this sense of pleasure and pain in what is impressed upon us. So recognizing that pleasure happens and pain happens shows us what? That we're capable of moving towards conceptions of virtue and conceptions of vice based upon the impression that's left upon us, which leaves us with Kant. Uh, perhaps the most interesting of each of these four thinkers, Kant, as I argued, wanted to make philosophy moral. The way that he believed he could make philosophy moral is by making it concrete recognizing what limitations there are to what we can know in the Numina world, but also making it moral, suggesting that within this world of phenomena, we can understand what categorical imperatives are, what duty is, what morality demands of us as human beings. So here, by placing so much emphasis on human cognition, what Kant hopefully does is reintroduce something like a secular morality back into the picture of human nature. Thank you.